Once Britain's second largest car builder, the Roots Group incorporated many of the nation's most famous marks, including Hillman, Sunbeam, Humber and Tolbert, and was thereby able to create a stalwart rival to the much larger British Motor Corporation during the 1950s and 60s. By 1980, though, the Roots Group was gone, its legacy being one of the most spectacular collapses in automotive history, as mismanagement, government intervention and poor choices helped to bring down this former giant of the British car industry. The tale of the Roots Group begins with William Billy Roots, who in 1914 in the small village of Hawkehurst, Kent, ran a bicycle shop before branching out into motor vehicles after an apprenticeship with Singer Motors of Coventry, establishing a sales and service company with the assistance of his younger brother, Reginald Roots, who had trained as an accountant in the Admiralty. With a grant of £2,400 from their father, also named William Roots, equivalent to £50,000 in 2024, the pair created Roots Limited, a vehicle distributor based in Maidstone, the county town of Kent, and by 1924 had secured their place as franchisee to Austin Motors for showrooms in and around London, making them among the largest car distributors in Britain, with branches in the southeast, the Midlands and across Western Europe. In 1925, Roots Limited purchased the coach builder Thrupp and Maberley, which had been founded in 1760 and had evolved its craft from horse-drawn carriages to motor cars, building bodies for Rolls-Royce and Daimler models. But over the next decade, the Roots brothers, taking influence from the likes of Ford in America as to stylistic and technical design, planned their rapid expansion into becoming their own manufacturer. This would begin through early attempts to buy a stake in the Standard Motor Company and the Clino Engineering Company but both of these failed due to the influence of the 1929 Wall Street crash, though opportunity would present itself in the shadow of Britain's biggest car firms, Austin and Morris, who continued to consume ever larger swathes of the car market, thus pushing out other smaller firms that struggled to compete. Among these were the likes of Hillman and Humber, who were in a poor financial situation as their market share continued to fall. Therefore, in 1927, Root secured an investment in the Hillman Company, followed a year later by Humber, bringing both firms together under the Roots Umbrella Group and thus merging their factories into one. This merging of the two firms under the Roots name worked wonders for their productivity, allowing the combined capital of each company to refresh the product line and see a new range of three cars develop, the Hillman Minx, the Humber 12 and the larger Hillman Wizard. The Wizard, which was launched in April 1931, was aimed squarely at the export market to the colonies of the British Empire, as well as the Commonwealth, but this desire to sell abroad meant it was too large, too slow and too expensive for UK buyers, and thus only 6,000 was sold before the car was dropped in 1933. Though the Wizard was a disappointment, the company's second model, the Hillman Minx, would be the opposite, a smash hit that put the Roots Group on the map upon its launch in 1932, and one that would see sales success for the next 40 years as a quintessential part of the British motoring scene, being cheap, easy to run, and highly competitive with the rival Morris 10. Finally, the Humber 12, as launched in 1932, was another modest machine that sold reasonably, but as the product range increased throughout the 1930s, the Roots brothers made a superb car-building team, with Billy Roots being the driving force behind the company's models, while Reginald kept an eye on the finances with Hillman and Humber models gradually becoming more parts interchangeable as the decade progressed. Each of their cars were built around a common chassis and body shell, as produced by Press Steel, while Thrupp and Maberly continued to provide bespoke coachwork for low-volume luxury machines. In 1934, Roots added another firm to its ranks in the form of the Anglo-French STD or Sunbeam Talbot Dirac, a builder that created a wide variety of products ranging from high-end luxury limousines and sports cars to trolleybuses, but after the company was stricken by financial collapse following the 1929 Wall Street crash, Roots secured itself as a creditor to the STD Group prior to its demise in June 1934. This meant that the rights to each of the brands was now theirs to revive on a new range of Sunbeam and Talbot models, and with the onset of World War II, Roots created shadow factories at Stoke Aldermore and Wrighton on Dunsmore near Coventry, helping to construct aircraft engines for the war effort. Following the creation of the Wrighton plant, the firm had increased its building capacity from 50,000 to over 100,000 cars per annum, accounting for 15% of the UK car market, 
while efforts by the company to build 30% of Britain's bombers, including the Bristol Blenheim and the Handley Page Halifax, provide 10,000 Merlin engines and repair 21,000 aircraft, together with maintaining 60% of Britain's armoured cars and assembling 20,000 American Lend-Lease support kits, meant the company had drummed up superb public relations. Roots cars were also prided among the top brass of Britain's armed forces, the Hillman Minx and Humber Snipe being favourites as staff cars and VIP transports, with Field Marshal Bernard Montgomery making use of a Humber Super Snipe as part of his campaign, while Billy Roots was asked to lead the industrial reconstruction of Coventry after the German Blitz of November 1940, which devastated the ancient city centre, his efforts ultimately earning him a knighthood. Upon the end of the war in 1945, the Roots Group, like many parts of the UK industry, placed a slant on export sales in order to remain competitive, establishing satellite companies such as Roots Australia, where cars were built at a local factory in Harrisfield near Melbourne, and in the Middle East. The Middle Eastern operation, which was based in the Iranian capital of Tehran, revolved around what was dubbed initially as the Iran National, but would later be called the Paikan, a license-built version of the Roots Arrow, as produced by the Iran Kodro Company, this car being exceedingly popular in Iran, and would give rise to a number of variants, and remained in production as a saloon until 2005, and as a pickup until 2015. One notable mistake by Billy Roots, though, was his snubbing of a then-little-known German car called the Volkswagen, which had been used as part of a pre-war morale campaign by Adolf Hitler in order to mobilise the nation in the run-up to World War II. Roots, though, when he was asked to assess the model to see if it had any potential production value, considered it too ugly and unattractive, not realising that he, and later Ford as well, had passed over what was to become one of the best-selling cars in the world. In 1949, the Roots Group was floated on the London Stock Exchange, and also added to its arsenal the diesel engine builder Tilling Stevens in 1950, in order to provide an in-house diesel truck engine, while exports still accounted for 70% of production by the middle of the decade. On the export market, complete knockdown or CKD kits of the Minx were shipped out to plants in Australia, New Zealand and South Africa for assembly, although North American models were dispatched fully built. Finally, things came full circle when Roots, in 1955, purchased the Singer Company at which Billy Roots had been an apprentice half a century earlier, their former Birmingham factory becoming a component storage and distribution hub, while the Singer brand was slotted into the Roots hierarchy between the low-end Hillman and luxury Humber marks, with badge-engineered Minx derivatives being sold as the Singer Gazelle and Vogue. Things turned for the Roots Group, though, in the late 1950s, as while the company could produce 100,000 cars per year, this and its narrow range of products meant it was still playing second fiddle to the larger British Motor Corporation, or BMC, which held under its banner the Morrison Austin brands. Therefore, proposals were made for Roots to merge with Standard Triumph, who were building both small family cars under their standard mark and highly successful Triumph Roadsters, but the merger scheme collapsed due to a conflict of personalities. With the failure of the Standard Union, Roots was denied access to the Standard 8, a model which would have allowed them to compete directly with the Austin Mini, an economy car that was taking the UK market by storm in the wake of fuel rations imposed due to the 1956 Suez Crisis, undercutting regular saloons like the Minx. Thus, Roots was left no choice but to create their own economy car under Project Apex which would eventually become the Hillman Imp, this decision being one on which the entire future of the firm would hinge and would include a brand new factory expansion at the existing Wrighton plant, but planning permission was blocked by the UK government. This state intervention was done as part of a government initiative to solve pervasive unemployment problems in southern Scotland, as the shipbuilding and locomotive industries failed, Parliament instead demanding that the firm construct a new facility in areas which were suffering economically and thus a plant was established at Linwood near Glasgow, 300 miles from the company's heartland of the West Midlands. Constructed between 1960 and 1963, the Linwood plant would employ 5,500 workers across Scotland and produce 150,000 cars per year, with building costs being shared by government grants to help carry the financial burden. At the same time, early imps underwent development and testing in Coventry, utilising an engine derived from a fire pump that used an all-aluminium alloy overhead cam configuration 
and a full synchromesh aluminium transaxle, which, though highly advanced for the time, caused problems later down the line. The creation of both Linwood and the Imp, though, was one plagued by many other external and internal issues that, little by little, brought the Roots Group into a dangerous financial position, starting in 1961 with a three-month strike at the Group's London Pressing Company, British Light Steel Pressing, or BLSP, on the grounds of job security. While theories suggest that this was actually a bid by the trade unions to increase their control over the firm, the resulting lack of supply for body shells cost the company three months of production, and their profits collapsed by 85% between 1960 and 1961. At the same time, progress on the IMP project was running late and going over budget, all while, in the wake of the Mini's launch, more and more economy cars entered the market like the Ford Anglia. But the Roots Group's lack of experience with regard to small cars such as these showed in the final design of the IMP. The car was rear-engined and fitted with a four-cylinder water-cooled power plant mounted longitudinally behind the rear wheels, taking much of its inspiration from Billy Root's own experiences in the United States with the likes of the Chevrolet Corvair. In 1963, alongside the launch of the IMP, the £22 million computerized Linwood factory was formally opened by His Royal Highness the Duke of Edinburgh on May 2nd, but unbeknownst to the Duke, Large portions of the factory had not been finished, and thus were hastily hidden away from the royal visitor by curtains, while the imp he was filmed driving around in was one of only a dozen finished cars. Nevertheless, the car and factory were now working, but the honeymoon quickly ended when build quality and reliability issues came pouring in from customers, the reasons being due in part to the car's innovative but complicated rear-engine design, but also due to labour issues and union strife. Thus, the 150,000 car per year volume of the Linwood plant was never reached by the IMP alone. Production of the IMP was also a logistical nightmare for Roots, as while the cylinder blocks for the die cast engine were made in Linwood, the machining and assembly could only be done in Coventry, and thus unfinished IMPs were shipped en masse by train 300 miles to the Wrighton factory, had the work done, and then shipped 300 miles back to Linwood for final assembly. The result was the car's price rising to the point where it cost £508, or £10,878 in 2024, £60 more than the Mini. And while the Minx was still a successful rival to the likes of the Vauxhall Victor and the Ford Cortina, and the Sunbeam Alpine was a desirable sports car for its era, the firm was making a loss year on year, and by 1964 it had attracted the attention of Lynn Townsend, president of Chrysler. Townsend was on the prowl for a possible expansion into Europe, replicating the same practice undertaken by Ford and General Motors, initially purchasing 30% of the voting shares in the Roots Group and later 50% of the non-voting stock, to become the largest non-controlling shareholder in the company. As Chrysler increased its influence on the Roots Group, now holding boardroom representation, as well as replacing the Comma and Carrier truck brands with their own Dodge mark, Sir William Roots retired in June 1964, placing his brother as chairman of the firm before passing away shortly afterwards on December 12th of the same year. In 1965, more trouble brewed when BMC purchased the Press Steel Bodybuilding Company, which included both the Cowley and Linwood facilities, meaning that BMC now held direct control over the Roots Group as well as nearly every other car maker in Britain but the Linwood elements of pressed steel were eventually sold back to the Roots Group by BMC and renamed Roots Pressing Scotland Limited, transferring to them all tooling necessary for the assembly of Roots products. The following year, the British government announced it had agreed terms for a full takeover of the Roots Group by Chrysler, and although there had been earlier talk regarding either BMC or the Leyland Group potentially purchasing the ailing firm, neither raised any objections or proposed an offer of their own and thus in 1967, control was formally handed over to the American giant. Sir Reginald Roots would thus pass the role of chairman to William Roots' son, William Geoffrey Roots, while the former company was renamed to Chrysler Europe, its empire being slimmed greatly to improve the firm's mounting losses, with the Humber brand being dropped in 1967, followed by the Singer mark in 1970, leaving just the Hillman and Sunbeam Talbot badges. During the same year, the long-awaited Hillman Avenger was finally launched after Chrysler funding helped bring the project to fruition, this car being highly successful on the UK market 
against the likes of the Morris Marina, Ford Escort and Vauxhall Viva, and even saw modest sales in the USA as the Plymouth Cricket. Though the future of the company showed promise, the final nail in the coffin came with the 1973 oil crisis, which rapidly damaged the sales of both American and European cars under the Chrysler name and forced the firm to the edge of bankruptcy, with a £125 million bailout being provided by the British government in 1975 to stop widespread redundancies across the Midlands and southern Scotland. In 1977, Chrysler launched the Sunbeam, a somewhat successful hatchback that went up against the Volkswagen Golf and the Renault 5 in the small economy car market, but sadly nothing could be done to reverse the company's dwindling sales, with matters becoming so dire that by this time the former Roots Group had lost its place as Britain's second largest car maker to the Tamworth-based Reliant Company. In 1978, Chrysler's new president, Lee Iacocca, who had disapproved of buying the Roots Group back in 1966, valued the company's British operations at a derisory sum of just one pound, and therefore, in order to cut down the wider Chrysler Group's own losses, sold the firm to Peugeot, including the company's shares in the French car builder Simca, which Chrysler had slowly incorporated since 1963, before a full takeover in 1970. With Peugeot in charge, they quickly identified the Linwood plant as the biggest loss-maker for their UK operations, and after only 18 years of production, the facility closed in 1981 as operations were moved to Wrighton, making thousands of workers redundant, while the factory itself was never used again, being demolished in stages between 1982 and 1996. For the surviving Talbot brand, this firm continued to produce low-end family cars like the Solara and the Tagara, and hatchbacks including the Sunbeam, Horizon and Samba, but following the recession of the early 1980s, as caused by the 1979 oil crisis, the company faced a protracted demise as the car market tightened and their models failed to sell. By 1985, the PSA Peugeot Citroen Group were questioning whether the Talbot brand should be sustained, as it created needless internal competition with their own models, this loss of faith in the brand being signified when the proposed Talbot Arizona, a replacement for the near 10-year-old Talbot Horizon, was dropped in favour of the Peugeot 309 in 1985, with production taking place at the Wrighton factory. This proved to be the beginning of the end for Talbot, as their models were replaced on the Coventry shop floor by British-built Peugeot cars, including the later 405, 306 and 206, all of which sold in huge numbers until the Wrighton plant closed in 2006 and was demolished to make way for the Prologis business park. By 1987, Talbot had disappeared from Coventry, and the last few models to carry the brand, namely the Talbot Horizon, were being produced at the former Barreros factory in Madrid, Spain, and in Finland, whereupon the last examples slipped quietly from the assembly line. The Talbot mark itself, as the final remainder of the Roots Group, would last be seen on UK market versions of the Fiat Ducato motorhome, continuing until their final end in 1994. To summarise, while many consider the collapse of the Roots Group to be squarely down to the turbulent Hillman Imp, the reality was that the firm's demise was caused by a variety of factors that all occurred around the time of the Imp's development. This included the three-month strike at BLSP, the government demanding that Roots set up a new factory in Scotland rather than their original proposal to extend their Coventry facilities, union strife and labour issues causing build quality and reliability problems, and the overarching concern that the company was simply too small to compete against the giants of America, mainland Europe and British Leyland. These factors would therefore culminate to initially destroy the firm's independence when Chrysler took over as parent company, while the downward spiral of the motor industry, as caused by the 1973 oil crisis, would only serve to accelerate the process of the Roots Group becoming yet another series of fallen flags in the chequered past of the British automotive industry.